I heard a rumor that we're back and talking about Umbrella Academy Season 4. <laughs> wee wee wee. <laughs> Oh man, okay, we're back. We had a small little break. I think it's very important that creators, people, you as a human need a break, right? Yes. You have to like, if you're doing stuff and it's becoming like overwhelming, everything's like piling up, you just need to take a step back for a second. Yeah, mm-hmm. our, our our beautiful little batteries needed to recharge and I think we're fully charged. Yes, we have tons of plans. We're, we're going to be setting up a little better recording space. So we're also working on that. Tons of fun plans, things coming out. Um, let us know what you want to hear us do. It's been a minute. A lot has come out. We haven't done Deadpool and Wolverine. So like, yeah. <laughs> We've been very, very busy binge watching reality dating shows, <laughs> especially gay international ones. So we've had a lot going on. That's how we recharge our batteries. Yes. Is it? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Just like that. So before we get into everything, as always, make sure you're following us, all the socials. We have a Patreon. We have a Discord. Um, say hi. Throw stars our way. Give us a review. All of those normal things that you do, do them. If do you them. like what you hear, slash C. Um, the videos are on YouTube and also on Spotify. If you listen on Spotify. So you can see our faces. All right. So Umbrella Academy, season four. We're finally at the end. Yes, of this show surprised it got a season four. To be honest, it's been like a couple of years. Uh, lots of thoughts. I think this is going to be a challenge for us. Yeah. So major, major spoiler alerts because we're covering the entire season four. Yeah, and everything in the show so far is uh, up for grabs. Yeah. So if you haven't seen it, go watch it, and then come back. Yeah, and let us know what you thought. All right. So <laughs> let us officially take a bite of the Umbrella Academy season four. Having adjusted to mundane lives without powers, a professional dancer, CIA agent, bar owner, delivery truck driver, stay-at-home mom, recently released felon, hypochondriac, and laundry detergent spokesperson come together to celebrate a family birthday party. The gang soon discovers a timeline reset called The Cleanse, being supported by a group called The Keepers, led by line-dancing lovers Dr. Jean Thibodeau and Dr. Jean Thibodeau. The estranged siblings mend bonds, heal old wounds, and unite with upgraded powers to save the world one final time. Mm, That sounds nice. (laughs) I did what I could. (laughs) All right, so, you know, what we strive to do on this little show that we have is try to be positive. Queer voices and everything, right? And so I think with something that we like so much with the Umbrella Academy, having it go from 10 to 6 episodes was jarring, right? I think that's out there. Once we saw that, we are like, that's interesting. I don't know know what we're going to do with that. Um, So we figured the best way to go about this, like review, kind of talk about it, is go character by character. But what are your thoughts? Of the final season, anything you want to say about the series before we go? (laughs) Well, the series as a whole is super entertaining, and I really love the trajectory it sort of went on. The first season felt very serious to me, and then two and three they had a little more fun with. I think we still get that fun in four, but we lose a lot of the depth that we had going out throughout the first three seasons. And seeing it go from 10 episodes to six episodes, you go, well, they have four less episodes because they're so they're really gonna make every minute count. Everything is going to have a purpose and it's going to mean something and it's the final arcs of these characters. And do I think that they did that? Not necessarily. Mm -mm. How about you? Yeah, I I think fair, right? I, I, a lot of people are sharing the same sentiments, which gives me some solace, right? Because I, I think I was watching it and we were episode four and I was like, they have like two hours left to wrap this up and as i was watching it i was like i like i'm not jiving with this like i'm liking it because it's the characters i love right i love these actors i just wasn't i was like this is weird like something's weird yeah i i don't think they stuck the landing which is unfortunate i loved the journey up until this point i honestly i think looking back and this might be a hot take to especially start this with they could have just ended it with three Mm. Like, I feel like resetting the universe, them not having powers, having to start their life again, 
not showing Hargraves and Abigail up there, setting them up to be a villain that they're not going to be. Don't show that, but just show them kind of, okay, we, we saved it. Like we reset everything Bye. like, yeah, I would have been fine with that. And I think that in these six episodes, I, some of it actually felt not very original to me. I feel like there were a lot of references to things. I mean, one of them right up the front is the idea of multiverses and different timelines. And I mean, that's just hot right now in pop right. culture, right? So that's one thing. I mean, we have, there's a whole sense of end of the world here with strawberries being a link between two romantic interests, which we saw in The Last of Us, right? Right. Yeah. And then even the ending. And Nick Offerman. And Nick Offerman, them. yes. <laughs> and uh, Nick Offerman is not original. The yeah. fact that he's in this and he was in that other one. <laughs> and then for me, the very, very end after credits scene felt like, spoiler alert, the good place. Yeah. Me. Yeah. I, uh, so yeah, th- it, it's interesting, right? Because I feel like, and I don't want to use like kind of um, explosive language with this of like character assassination and like they just completely ruined like blah, blah, blah. I do feel like there's some extent and a lot of the people that worked on it from the beginning worked on it till the end. And I know that there was recent accusations that came out about Blackman, the guy, the showrunner mm. um, for the show from season one to four. So who knows really what happened? I'm surprised that they greenlit this season, to be honest. And then they kind of did what they did. It was almost like they were like, okay, let's soft reboot again at the end and then not acknowledge anything that we set up or any character, whatever, which we'll get into when we go character by character. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think we're feeling the same way on this, which is nice. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And, United front. Yeah. And it's, and I want to say that, I mean, I'm not giving it, I'm not saying it's out of like a one to 10, it's a one, right? It was still entertaining. It was still nice to be with those characters again, but I just felt like it didn't do justice to what they had set up in those first three seasons. I think that's what it is. Like story-wise as fans, it's like, okay, we kind of feel like slighted a little bit, but I think a lot of people are, are almost kind of sad for the cast and all the work that people put into it. Cause it's like, we wanted to really love it. Like we wanted you guys to get that send off. And it was, eh. you know, if they had a good time, I'm sure they did, mm-hmm. but I've seen some interviews and you can feel kind of like, I don't know why they, they didn't mention that. I don't know why my character did that. And it's like, what? Yeah. That's weird for like in an interview for them to be like, well, I don't know. It's like, that's odd. Okay. <laughs> we should get into characters because yes. I feel like we're just going to keep like circling the drain. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What a what a thing to come back with. Hi guys. Hi. We we've, we've missed you. We've missed talking about things. I think that this is good. It's getting us loosened yeah. up to yeah. get back into this. Yeah. Let's go. Just a whole season in one bite. Let's go. <laughs> so let's start with 5. Mm. Um favorite character throughout the whole series. Um loved him. I am so confused. Um, what happened with this character we, the thing that made him interesting right is aiden his name the the actor's name yeah, is aiden right aiden gallagher aiden gallagher was like 15 when he first got the role and he's playing a character that has like the mind of a 60 year old man and a 15 year old body but at the core of him he's tough he's scary he knows what he's doing created the commission all of this stuff but he loves his family mm-hmm. and he would do anything to make sure his family is safe and they're together which is What's happened through this whole thing. I don't know why they changed his character in this one. Like he just didn't feel the same. It was almost the same beats. Like he's working for an agency again. Okay. He, you know, just doesn't have that like joy. It Mm. just didn't feel like it, you know? And the biggest issue is Lila. I think I, they, they spent way too long with it. They didn't need to make him have like a love interest. With Lila, which is his sister-in-law, it's weird, right? It's like he was a child's body, not a child anymore. I know they were there for seven years, but like, just make him be friends, like have a bond that way. Mm. Like, not don't fuck over your brother like that. Yeah. I know, it's odd, very odd. I think that at his core, you know, and this is the thing, right? Is that like, when we were thinking about just kind of talking before we watched it, like what happened in the last seasons? We were like, oh, well, the end of the world happened in season one. And then we were like, oh, in season two, oh, the end of the world happened. And then right. season three, well, the end of the world happened. So 
you know, and I feel like five kind of had that same beat throughout of just kind of being like, when I think of five, I think of him looking so young, but being the most mature yes. out of all of them. He's the smartest one. He's always the man on the inside. And I think at the beginning of this season, we got that still. A little right? bit, right. So he was still in the CIA, even though the rest of them are kind of struggling. He has made his place in a bigger organization. Uh, but, you know, I think the trajectory of his timeline of being on these trains, which, oh, by the way, uh, Russian Doll season two, by uh, the way. There's... I feel like at the end, we should just like talk about the things that they didn't like explain at all because mm -hmm. there's a lot. Yeah. I have no idea what the subway had to do with anything. It's Russian doll season two. Well, right. But why? Like, I don't know. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But again, it's just another thing that they pulled from. It felt yeah, like. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I think that's like the biggest problem, right? Is because like we've seen him for three seasons now. That's 30 episodes, hours of him, right? We know this character. We know what he's capable of. I thought it would have been a really cool, like send off for him to one, not fuck over his family, which he's never done. Mm. He would have never from the five that we know left them. Cause like there was a whole thing with Lila where he's wasn't going to show her how to get back and was just going to stay there. He would have never, that's not five. He fell in love with her. Right. That's weird. I just think it's really weird for that character. And I know it's like, well, these people are writing these characters, but you set up certain parameters for a character. They don't break those usually. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it just felt weird. And it would have been nice for how Lila got introduced, her journey coming into the family, and then Five and Lila becoming really close, but like siblings. Right. Because they fought a lot in the beginning, and now they're close, not fucking. Like, yeah. that's weird. Like, ugh. <laughs> I don't know how straight people work, so yeah. maybe that, I don't know, that's the thing. <laughs> if you're traveling with someone for six years, you have to have sex with them. Like, I get it. Yeah. He's like, it's so long, right? right? Six, seven years is so long, and the first time he did it, decades was with a doll right i get that you have a person it's just you know what kind of surprised me is that and and i might just be misremembering but i always kind of felt like five gave ace vibes like he was a little bit asexual right i felt like he wasn't a sexual being he was business mm -hmm. you know and, and so badassery. right exactly and so he just like didn't never had time for things like that. And so right. I don't know, maybe traveling on a subway for six years, you do have time, but it did. It felt really uncomfortable. I didn't mind the subway idea in itself. I thought it was it kind was of fun, kind of cool waste of time, but it was well, I mean, that's the thing, though, is that so what I was hoping for this season is that we would have them all together all the time. Right. Only in episode two. Right. And so for episodes one and two, I'm like, we're doing it. We're here. But then they split up and went on these like bizarre side quests. And this happened to be five in Lila's. Right. Which it's like, it's so interesting because if you take all of their side quests and everything and you had the 10 episode season or even more and on paper, it's like, cool. Like, yeah, makes sense. Not some of the choices and everything, obviously, but like, but to have it, it's six episodes and we have like a whole episode of just five and Lila doing this thing. And it's like, guys, the end of the world, like Victor is the only one on task in this entire season. Mm. Like they all were in it up until episode two. And then they just. Yeah. So and, bizarre. Yeah. And I even feel like taking Lila for a second, who I was so happy to see. Was, so let's do Lila. Now. Was, yeah. yeah, sure. Was in it more. But compared to Allison, I felt like Allison really fell to the background of this season where Lila was really kind of front and center and not to be this person, but she's not the original siblings. You know what I mean? It's like I would have rather spent more time with the originals. Yeah, I think there's a lot of bizarre choices in here. I loved that we got more Lila. Mm. Love the character. Actor, fantastic. But at the detriment of some of the original cast, like the people that we first fell in love with. Right. And yes, she is a sibling. She belongs there with him. But if you're going to kind of put her up here at the end and just forget about some of this other stuff, it's a, such a bizarre choice before actually, before we move on to Lila, if that's going to be our second one, let's try to like say a positive thing. Uh, each one of these <laughs> as we go, just to balance it out. Right. We're all about positivity. We like to try <laughs> to find the good stuff. We're just nice boys. Yeah. We're just trying to be nice. Trying. Um, do you have anything positive? No, about five? no, no, I do. I do. I actually, so 
It's what, my favorite number. <laughs> what, I love the number five. Um, Cinco is the best. Uh, no, I think the thing that I liked throughout this season is that I laughed a lot in this season. And so I loved Five's whole undercover storyline at the beginning, getting into the keepers, having that mustache. Mm. I thought that was fun. That is. That was a lot of fun. This is weird because of everything I just said about him and Lila. I loved their dynamic together. Romance aside, like at the keeper meeting and all of that, I'm like, I love this. Like they make such a great team. I like this a lot. And I like that he had her back Mm. because he's accepting her as a sibling at first and then a love interest. But like when it came to not telling Diego and then when you kind of look at it after the fact, it's like you kind of were just shady with Diego the whole time. Yeah. So I liked his beginning parts with Lila. I thought it was cool to see him really connect with the sibling and then it fell apart. So I guess it's like half good, half bad. That took a turn. (laughs) Yeah, it took a turn. (laughs) All right. So let's do Lila or yeah, let's do Lila and Diego. I feel like we have to put them together. Sure. As they should be together. Um, thoughts. So my thoughts are that I think that Lila really fucked Diego over. Mm. So here's the thing, right? Is if we think about Lila and five, I think they share a lot in common as far as how they kind of work, right? Lila was an assassin. She was undercover for a really long time. Five is the same way, but I think it's unfair for her to be fed up with Diego, who is driving a delivery bus and peeing basically in an orange juice bottle to support their family. You know, and multiple she's, kids, multiple kids. They have three kids. They're all adorable. But I just thought it was kind of a sucky storyline for Diego in that beginning part because he's doing the best that he can. He always wanted to be the leader. He always wanted to be a CIA agent, which we see happen towards the end of the season, which is fun. And he was like, no, thanks. <laughs> right. Because he realized it wasn't all it was cracked up to be. But I just thought it was really unfair that he's trying his hardest to be a good father. And she doesn't appreciate that in a way or not necessarily necessarily appreciates that. But she kind of holds that against him in some sense. I do think there was something. I, I feel that. And I do think that she tried to voice it in the vein of, you know, you complain so much about the life that we're building together. Mm. And I think that an important part, like one of the best written parts I feel maybe is when they finally talk about that. I, I can't remember when it actually happened, but she said something of like, I don't outwardly show it because it's our home. I'm not going to bring that into our home. She's like, but that's all you do. And which is sad because I think that That does go along with Diego's character through his journey from these four seasons. But it was weird that like they just kept jabbing at him. Like Mm -hmm. they were like, you have a dad bod now. That's a dad bod. Man looks good. He looks fantastic. Everybody in the show. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. All of them. Sexy. Gorge. Gorgeous. Um, Even Reginald. Gorgeous. (laughs) That goatee. You know, it's great. It had power this season. That goatee. It flips. Yeah. yeah. Um, But yeah, I, I think that like the... In the end, it really pisses me off that Diego and Five hate each other. Mm -hmm. And Lila's literally in the middle of it. I'm like, what is the freaking point of this show? It's all about family. They're dysfunctional, but no matter what, they come together and they can overcome whatever's happening. The apocalypse many times. Yeah. In the end, they hate each other. Yeah. They they fought with each other. What? Bizarre. Like, they fucked over Diego's character so much. I loved him in this for the... Funny moments, the CAA stuff is so funny, but they really fucked him over. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think when he and Luther go to the CIA, they do have this really badass fight. And I think that's a lot, you know, with Diego throughout the series, he wasn't the leader like Luther. He wasn't as smart as five, and he always kind of felt like he didn't measure up to them. So we do see in these final scenes of him kind of kicking ass at the CIA that like Diego can be a leader. He can rise to the occasion, which we always knew. But I agree. I think the better part of this season really was kind of just knocking him down. Yeah. Uh, Can we like real quick before we move on to the next one? They don't have their powers. They get their powers, which I'll, we'll talk about this in like the plot holes, I guess, a little section at the end. Um, They get their powers back very quickly. Um, Even though there was another time jump and we don't know these characters anymore. And they got like upgraded powers but like different powers that they didn't really use which was 
absolutely bizarre. Why did Lila get laser vision? I don't know. She can just do other people's powers that are around her. Why did she get laser vision? That, like, like <laughs> she couldn't control, but then she could control, but then she never really <laughs> used it again after she knew no. how to control it. And then she also said, which I thought was funny. She was like, it kind of burns. Yeah. Well, <laughs> now we know how Cyclops feels, I feel. Right. And so Five's extra power is that he can blink to the subway station. I'm like, part of me feels like, is that like a manifestation of like his abilities? Like he just somehow is connected to it because he does meet that like council of fives. Yeah. I have no idea. And then what, what was Diego's upgrade? He can actually control the trajectory oh, okay. of stuff. Like when he spun around with all the bullets. Fantastic. Oh, right. That was awesome. That yeah, was yeah. probably my favorite action scene in this. The town. Oh, so cool. Yeah. That was Umbrella Academy. That was Umbrella Academy. Yes. Everything else wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah so in victor's power is awful i wouldn't even call him an upgrade hard he could hardly do anything i don't understand uh a force field i don't know projecty stuff who knows couldn't he do that already they never explain what <laughs> he could do okay allison though she doesn't have to whisper it anymore Which she can kind of just look at you stupid though in a way because like that's so cool I heard a rumor and then, I don't know, like anytime you heard that in the show, it was just like, oh shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. But uh. also like now with this new power where she could just look at people, like she could have just stopped everyone. But she also has telekinesis, so I have no idea what her Okay. <laughs> Who are we missing? <laughs> ben? Doesn't matter. He didn't get upgraded powers. Uh, They're worse. Yeah, he's still a jerk. Klaus um, could levitate. Levitate hardly. And fly. Hardly. And Luther's bulletproof. Right. I'm going to save her plot holes. Okay. On to Luther. Okay. <laughs> um, ugh, oh, like, I don't understand. I don't understand. I have no idea. Luther had absolutely no real storyline. They in took this away season. Sloan, mm -hmm. which if everybody remembers, tiny little refresher, literally married her in the last season. And the end of season three is like, I'm going to go find Sloan. No mention. Nothing. I think I, one tiny mention and that's it. Doesn't even act like he lost Sloan. It's so bizarre. It was like him with Allison, great for the character. Him and Sloan, loved it. I loved it, loved it, loved it. And then now, I don't know why he, he had nothing to do. I, I mean, <laughs> I think that they really just fully, officially made him a himbo. Right? They I, made him a hot idiot, officially, in this last season. Why? At the end, like, it, it was, he's not that funny like the way they wrote him i think he's charming in a way but like it's kind of the same beat every time mm. so it was like okay like no that's fine you're yeah. not you have no purpose of being <laughs> i mean obviously in the first episode or two we see that he's the one that's really been trying to get them all together again right right nice. yeah. which is really nice and then after that he's kind of just like supporting others in their role mainly diego i mean he does uncover the plot at the cia that they're part of the keepers but that's about it yeah, but we had five literally working there and didn't notice. There's a character named Derek. Yeah, there is. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just stop and, every, and be grateful for that. Every time there's a character named Derek in something, they usually are like three different types of archetype of character. Mm -hmm. And that was one of them. But it was really funny to be like, oh, there's, yeah, that's Derek. Yeah. You could just guess their name before they say their name. Yeah. Queer, uptight, with glasses. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Supporting character. <laughs> um, okay. Luther, um, something nice. Great dancing. Hot bod. Hot body. And also, I mean, after the CIA fight, walking around with the beast legs in the thong. Still think it's hot. Sure. Just saying. Yeah. But Harry, not great. Great to look at. He's quite handsome. Quite handsome. And he's British in real life, yeah. which is always fun. <laughs> Allison. Let's move on to Allison. Oh, sure. Great. So Allison's husband is gone. She's back with Claire. Klaus is living with her. And she does commercials for she, laundry detergent. Yeah. So she's not a successful actor anymore. She is struggling to find work, but she yes. has a nice house. She sure does. Great house. And her trajectory this season is nothing. I think that's how most of them are, aside from like Victor. Yeah. Everybody and Ben like don't really have anything going on because it's like there's like something weird that happens between Claire and Allison where it seems like they're not jiving. Like for some reason, it's like I hate my mom type of thing, you know, like they're just not oh, ever teenagers. Right. And then yeah. it just 
like never really gets acknowledged again. Um, yeah, I just, I really, I love Allison's character. I love her character, but I feel like right towards the middle of season three, I was like, I don't like what they're doing. I completely agree. Season two, she really stepped up. She right. really shone in her storyline being in the, uh, what was it like the fifties or the sixties? And then midway through season three, you know, she makes a deal with Reginald and, you know, it just wasn't great. For it wasn't parent, great. Yeah. And then this season, she just ends up kind of just worrying about her daughter or worrying about Klaus. Right. And there was a whole like savior complex and stuff like that, which I think is fine for a character. But again, it is really weird to have this like the end of the world thing is happening, whatever. And you have the keepers and you have all these concepts floating around. But then you have her like babysitting Klaus and just kind of going where the flow, you know, it, it was weird. If I will say one thing, I really felt her uh, performance when she realized that she had to leave her daughter mm -hmm. again. I really felt that. That was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And I personally, I just love uh, Emmy Raver Latman. Mm -hmm. So I'm just happy to see her again. I'm looking forward to her in whatever she's coming up with. But I, I think as far as the character itself, they kind of let Allison down. Agreed. Klaus. Klaus. Another favorite. Of one of, I think, five and Klaus are probably my favorites throughout the whole series. Um, I don't. They like regressed him back, yeah, to like early season one. So it was kind of annoying to see him like go through all that again, and then also like just not really go to his full potential because it's like he's immortal, but like still can't help himself. It's just odd. I think it's kind of fucked up to kind of frame uh, someone who is an addict and the journey of being forced to take the marigold again and then immediately completely regressing. It, it's odd, right? Because it's they made it seem like in the beginning that he used substances and wasn't sober to drown everything out, drown out the dead. So, And also he was seeing his dead brother, right? Mm -hmm. So it made sense. But he, he's supposed to have upgraded powers, right? So why getting that substance again is a thing. Right. Like, well, I, I'm just like confused. Like, who is this freaking guy? That, random, like, <laughs> random leather clad guy. And it's like so bizarre because again, each one of these like side quests, it's like, if we had more time and it wasn't the end. Right. Sure. But like, what are we doing here at this moment? His peak performance was with, was it Dave, David, the guy in the war? And oh, all of that. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was such beautiful. a good storyline. Season so, two. so good. And, you know, like I still loved his performance. Again, love these characters, but I just, I don't really have a high point for him in but this. What? It was just poltergeist sex, like insane, like yeah. really insane. And also to like, he like created a cult and then now he's just like trapped yeah. to be a, a sex worker. And I have to say that I'm, Again, I am always here for the humor that this series can bring to very, uh, to very serious situations. But I'm sorry, dog ghost peeing on a statue in a cemetery. It's so no. weird. No, <laughs> too lowbrow for Derek. <laughs> too too much of an easy shot yeah. kid joke. Yeah, not for me. It was is it's quite odd. Not for Derek. Quite odd. Who do we have left? Ben, Ben, and Victor. Yes. Okay. And then we have the other side characters, but so let's do Victor. Okay. Right. Cause it can lead into Ben. Um, Victor. I mean, Elliot page, Elliot page. Fantastic. Going back to his Canadian roots and Victor's living in Canada. Now Vix love that they have a bar. Hello. Love that all the women are breaking up with him. Love it. Love that for Victor. Love that. They were the only one that understood the mission of mm -hmm. the entire series. Um, didn't like the misplaced aggression and anger towards their not Reginald. So mm. like that entire thing for this whole season four, bizarre. It makes no sense. Like, why are all of you still hung up on him? Like, it's not him. It's not your Reginald. So when you find out all that stuff about Ben, it's like, why you really like, he, it's not him. So like, why are we even talking about this? Like, yeah, you should like, I find out about it, but like. Guys, stop fighting with your not Reginald. Like, he's not even doing anything. It's very confusing. <laughs> it's very confusing. I mean, I guess 
they just hate his face. And so when they see him, it just is trauma, trauma, trauma. I do feel like though Victor was the only one that had like the right, aside from Ben, I guess, but this this Victor particularly had the right to kind of say their piece yeah. with their father figure because they did get the shit end of the stick growing up. And I think Victor finally was able to get a lot of that out. And yeah. then also in the end, kind of pseudo work with the father and how it should have been. Um, so that was nice. Yeah. And okay, <laughs> that maybe this goes into plot holes and maybe I missed it. So I will, I'll, I'll completely be honest with this in the sense that like there were certain points where I felt like it was dragging and like my hand crawled towards my phone. So at one point, Victor gets shot in the arm and then is it's never brought up again. Oh, oh yeah. When they like they ambush them or yeah. something like that. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. They healed. Sure. Is that also part of their powers? No idea. I thought whenever you got Mary Gold, you get pregnant and none of them got pregnant. So. Not one of them got pregnant. No idea. Could have been beautiful. Yeah. So I imagine don't know. Klaus being pregnant. See, that would have been funny. <laughs> that would have been really funny. Oh, who do we have left? Ben. ben. Um, this so, adding Jennifer into this and having Ben like adding Jennifer, a new character, so late into the thing, odd. Connecting it to the original Ben story, fine. Like, yeah. I'm glad that we got to find out what happened. But why the hell did Ben's ghost never tell Klaus how he died? Yeah. Did did Reginald in some way also alter the ghost's memories? No. No. Yeah. Anyway, this Benifer kaiju amalgamation of like a thing. I have no idea what was happening. I didn't like it. I thought it was weird. They explained nothing. It didn't look great. I'm sorry. I'm being so negative here. But Ben's performance was amazing. (laughs) He did a really good job because I feel like, yes, we did sit with Ben a little longer in this one because, I don't know, they were like making up for him not being (laughs) able to be on screen. Um, But it's not our Ben, so I don't know. It's weird. Like, I feel like I'm supposed to feel something, but I know it's not the one I'm supposed to feel towards. Well, I think part of the problem is, is that Ben, as a character, never grew in any way, right? This Ben was the Sparrow Ben, and he was just always negative and hated everyone. And that's just kind of the same arrow that he rode throughout the entire series. Jennifer, though. Loved Jennifer. Oh, well, that might have just been the Marigold Durango talking. (laughs) What? What's Durango? You you heard me. I don't understand. Well, so um, have you ever... You should, listeners slash viewers, also you, because I don't think you've seen it, um, to see what Ben's attitude is like in the show, especially this Ben, just look at the promo pictures of Ben, like the character. He has the same pose in every single one. <laughs> it is so funny. I love it. I love it. I can't get enough of it. <laughs> that There's your positive. Yeah. I just, they... Yeah, they throw Jennifer into this. I they never explain why she was in the squid. Why was she in the squid? Uh, which is weird because like Ben's power is like squiddy. I honestly, if anybody understands this, please comment below. Say something. If you're on Spotify, you can also leave comments on episodes now. So like, do that, and we can talk there. Um, I'm very confused about that. Positives with them, I think. The story of like two of them trying to like figure out this like virus of love, but like this like hate love relationship kind of could have worked, but it just didn't really in the end. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I keep trying to find a positive, but I'm like, I don't know. Well, I think it's hard to find a positive in a series that I kind of feel ultimately tells us that we have absolutely no free will. That no matter what, you were always destined for the same ending. And so over four seasons, four apocalypse, apocalypse, apocalypses, I like apocalypses, apocalypses happened. So no matter what you do. And so for Ben, nothing is ever going to change. Well, for, yeah, I think it, it is an interesting thing for a show to be like, 
I, you know, I, I don't like to say it wasn't a dream, right? It's very close to having that ending of like, it was all a dream, which I think is never a good thing unless it's done really well. Um, I, I don't want to say that like them erasing themselves out of existence is like shitty or like, I don't know, doesn't mean anything or like just tells us nothing mattered because I think it's the journey, right? It's the journey up until that point. And I think there is something cool about heroes sacrificing themselves for the greater good. The greater good. Right. (laughs) I just, it was so dumb. Like I, I just, there was nothing happened. There was no fight. We got maybe two like action scenes really in this whole season. Um, they just gave up, which I thought was so weird. I don't know. It's just bizarre. Wasting Nick Offerman and Megan Mullally in this. You you can't re- recreate Hazel and Cha-Cha. You can't recreate right, that. And I, I feel like they tried to and they gave their best. I feel like they really tried. Um, but I think they forgot about them halfway through this and killed them easily. Yeah, I Done. think it would have made more sense if much like Hazel and Cha-Cha they were going after them in some way. Right. Whereas I thought of another here, they were just existing for the cleanse. And that was really it. I also feel like like, it's so hard because the stuff that's happening, the, uh, the concept of the keepers and finding things from other universes and stuff, it's like cool. And these people are so eccentric, but like, after a while, it was like, what is the point? Like, right. What is the point of you? Cause also the stuff you guys are doing is like getting weird. Like, Weird to the point of like, I'm not enjoying this. Like the shine has worn off. Well, yeah. I mean, right. We first meet them at like, I think like a bridge tournament. Funny. Then they have their barn. I didn't think the dance was funny at all. I think they were trying to recreate that first scene from that scene from season one where all the siblings were dancing. Every season we've gotten a dance number from like the siblings involved. This one we didn't. No. And then I thought like, oh, so now they own some sort of fast food franchise, which is also their headquarters. And I personally felt like Megan Mullally's performance was a little unbalanced because did she have an accent? Did she not have an accent? Well, I think. Well, they're newcomers, right? Mm -hmm. And it's also one of those things where you can tell they killed them so fast. And in the end, Nick Offerman's character, I even forgot his name, Gene. I, for, I was going to say, I forgot his name. Gene and Gene. Gene and Gene, um, which I think is hilarious. So good. Um, but he got replaced by Abigail. So it, it's just bizarre. Like, I feel like maybe they got a feeling, the actors of like, this is like just a paycheck at this point. Oh, yeah. And I feel so bad for saying, I think this is like the most like negative I've ever been. <laughs> We're coming in hot, people. <laughs> but like, that's what it feels like, right? And I don't know. Well, the thing, okay, here's the thing, is that I don't think we are being unfairly negative. Right. I think as two people... We're not being negative for clicks. (laughs) Yeah, this isn't clickbait. (laughs) Not clickbait. Put put that under the post. (laughs) That's going to be the title. Not clickbait. This show sucked. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But I think that we are two people who really, really enjoyed the first three seasons of the show, and we're hoping for something a little better. And it deserves better. Yes. And yeah. I think, unfortunately, especially for what it's kind of represented, at least to us and being having these queer characters, having them save the world, having them be complex. I mean, their identities, those queer identities didn't come into play really at all in this final season, other than Victor saying, like, you know, accept me for who I am and Reginald doing so. Right. And But yeah, I, I feel and like even that. Well, and I feel like it's, I don't even think that's about the uh, queerness, you know, it's like just about them accepting them, like, accept me as your, your child, your child, which is not even the right Reginald. So it doesn't matter. It's bizarre. Can we talk about like some weird things that they just like didn't answer or like plot holes? Go for it. Okay. Um, five, not knowing that the keepers are in the CAA would have never let that slide. Um, never explaining who reginald is he's an alien we never fully got to see his full alien form which sucked they built him up to be like the villain he's useless did nothing mm-hmm. abigail was more menacing than he was who the f- abigail? Who's abigail why did she come back what is durango what are the trains <laughs> and then also <laughs> so luther they get the marigold right 
They get their powers or some variation of powers. The people that did the show forgot what his powers are. His powers are not hairy. It's super strength. He got the hair and the monkey stuff from literally being injected with monkey DNA after being injured. True. That's not part of his powers. Very that's true. Like, you know, like that's like such a weird thing to slip. And also you don't have Pogo. Where's Pogo? Hi, like the universe reset. Where is he? I don't know. I'm just very upset that Pogo's not in it. We did see the Phoenix Academy, which was a mix of the Umbrella and the Sparrow Academy. For two seconds. They were yellow. That's nice. That was fun. I do like that. Yeah, yeah me too. I want to talk about okay. the end end. The, oh, yeah. The final scene, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. what ends up happening is that they basically have to let, you know, what is it? Durango, Marigold, Ben Monster, Jennifer Monster kill them, right. right? To reset all the timelines because there aren't supposed to be multiple timelines. There's only supposed to be well, one. Yeah, and it happened because they exist. Right. So if they don't exist, it goes into the sacred timeline. And Loki is holding it. Oh my God. He's, he's the train conductor. <gasps> doot, doot. Oh my God. Well, there is that. Remember, I always bring that up. In the original Fantastic Four of the TVA, there's a train that rides through space. What? Yeah. Original? Fantastic for oh yes right yes there is yeah. yes so the, I'm t I'm telling you there's a lot of blending happening here I but, thought you were talking about the movie I was like there's no TVA in that original Fantastic Four movie <laughs> not Fan Four Stick yeah the original original um anyway so they end up sacrificing themselves and they finally get that sacred timeline but you know and we see these glimpses of all their happier times maybe the times when they were most happy in all of these lives that they've had and they end up as eight marigolds under a tree right. in this place where we see past characters alive again in the same area in the same area so i feel like personally they're actually in the afterlife i don't think they're actually on earth anymore because is this lost because the handler <laughs> is there she's dead yeah hazel and agnes are there i think they're also dead uh, Sissy is there dead? No, I don't think Sissy's dead. No, but because also, but so Lila's family is there. Also, Claire is there. Like literally everybody aside from the siblings is there. But how are they there if they've never existed? They didn't even know what Luther's powers were. So I don't think they know. It, I mean, it is one of those questions too. Like, I feel like once you get the multiverse involved and you don't handle it with care, it gets messy because how does Claire and Diego and Lila's kids exist without if, them? Right. If That's they don't what I'm exist. saying. That's why I think it's more of a afterlife sort of situation, a place of just, non-existence. I don't know. You know, there's also 42 other people that have marigold that have powers like there, that. There's a point to that. Right. And so why do only these eight have to die? Where are the other? Because they're the troublemakers. Right. So it's just <laughs> like, I think they just wanted to end it whichever way they wanted to. And it just didn't really work. Personally, um, yeah. I mean, thanks Netflix for giving us the screeners for this. We watched it. We watched it. Um, I'm sad it's over. I'm sad yes. that that was the ending we got. Same. I love that they got to end it. You know, like I love that these actors got to come together one last time and be like, okay, like here we go. My favorite thing of this entire season was the photos that we saw at the very end. Yes. The past, because it was the behind really, the scenes right. stuff. It was so much fun just seeing all these actors, like how much they loved each other and how much they were connected. And seeing how little Five was at Aiden Gallagher. He was just 15, a kid. 15. I know. Baby. Yeah. Also, that's why it's gross, Lila. <laughs> like he's like 22 now. <laughs> I know. I kept thinking, I'm like, how old is he? Yeah, he's, he's older now, but yeah. Mm. Barely. Anyway, so um, overall, yeah, let us know what you thought. Again, please. Yeah, you know which how to get in contact with us. All right. So do you want to hear about the gay dating shows that we watched? Oh, yes. We did watch quite a few. Yes. A lot. I love them. Uh, maybe Patreon. Ooh, uh, fun. Yeah, a little hangout, gay hangout. Um, okay, I'm getting heartburn <laughs> from this episode. <laughs> <laughs> so until next time. Bye. Bye.